Hello, my name is Dr Laura Ward and I'm going to talk to you through our poster presentation from the Seattle Club 2023 at the University of Birmingham. So the Scottish Learning Disabilities Observatory have been working on a programme of work for a couple of years now and part of that work is this piece around the cancer incidence and mortality of adults with intellectual disabilities in Scotland. So this is a retrospective whole population electronic linkage study involving a large number of researchers and clinicians and a huge thanks to our very wonderful research team. So I want to talk you through the poster and if you have any questions please feel free to get in touch. Um, either with myself at the University of Dundee or with my colleagues at the observatory. So we're just going to zoom in. So the first section is the so what, why did we do this work? And essentially there is a very outdated and limited evidence relating to the experiences of cancer for people with a learning disability or intellectual disability. And from our perspective, it is um, important to look at both cancer incidence and cancer mortality together um, and use robust representative samples um, rather than smaller clinical kind of convenience samples, for example. So the available evidence from Patia and Sullivan is now over 20 years old. So there's a real urgency to improve our data on what is happening in terms of cancer in this patient population. So our aim was to describe cancer incidence and mortality rates in adults with intellectual disabilities at a population level using a large nationwide cohort of adults of all ages with intellectual disabilities compared with the general population. So in Scotland in 2011, we were one of the first um, countries to include a question on if you had a intellectual disability or autism, or Down syndrome for example, in the census. So we use that census data set to link to administrative health data sets and um, public records as well. So we had the um, kind of the demographics of if someone had a learning disability from the Scotland census. And then we had uh, the cancer registry data from SMR06 and then the death certificate data as well. So for the whole of Scotland, we have 17,203 adults with intellectual disabilities. And for data minimization purposes, we were provided with a 15% control comparison cohort. So we, have, we had 566,061 adults with, um, without intellectual disabilities or autism. And we use that con reference cohort for um, age, sex, standardised incident rate ratios and, and mortality ratios as well. So the paper, this initial paper, is simply to report on the, the rates of, of cancer and different types of cancers as well. And we were quite strict with what we, inc we included and considered to be cancer. So, um, benign neoplasms were not included and what we found was that the most common common cancers for both incidence and mortality for adults with intellectual disabilities were colorectal cancers, lung cancer and metastatic cancer of unknown primary origin. And for any cancers their mortality ratio was higher regardless of the occurrence at higher, similar or lower incidence. So overall, the population with intellectual disabilities were more likely to die of cancer than the general population, despite many of these cancer related deaths being considered as preventable. And what I should note here is that for this analysis, we actually ran two parallel analyses where we looked at death certificate data for the main cause of death, so whether that's the first position of the death certificate data, um, the underlying cause of death, but we also looked at all causes of death. So we had a combination of the potential reasons for that death as well. So this data is just for the underlying main cause of death. 
So we see a very different experience of that with the intellectual disabilities population. And there was a statistically significant excess cancer mortality for colorectal cancers, breast cancer, female genital organs, this includes like ovarian and uterine cervical cancers, urinary cancer, hematopoietic cancers, and metastatic cancers of unknown primary origin. So those are cancers that are considered so far along, we just don't know where they originated. So this figure shows you the differences between the groups in terms of um, the incidence cancers of being diagnosed with cancer and then the cancer related uh, death as well. On the left hand side here, we have women and on the right hand side, we have men. So we have a red line for one, which shows there's, there's no differences. The, the groups are kind of very similar in their experiences. And then um, higher shows an increased likelihood for adults with intellectual disabilities and lower is a decreased likelihood for adults with intellectual disabilities. And in, um, in purple, we have the cancer incidence plotted and in blue, the cancer mortality. So these are the incident rate ratios and the standardized mortality ratios as well. So for both men and women, there is a, perhaps a similar rate of, of digestive cancers in adults with intellectual disabilities compared to without, but there's a higher rate of mortality from, from those cancer types. And this can be seen um, with the biggest results from the colorectal cancers, but also esophageal and stomach cancers as well. Um, and you can see we, we do have quite large confidence intervals with the error bars there, but also statistically significant um, differences in terms of the experiences of adults with intellectual disabilities. As expected, there's a lower rate of respiratory or lung cancers. Um, but other differences really are the, the kind of the sex specific um, cancers down the bottom halves of the graphs. So for women with intellectual disabilities, they are much more like they're much less likely to be diagnosed with breast cancer, which perhaps isn't surprising given the fact that we know in Scotland there's a very low uptake of screening programs for women with intellectual disability grant, disabilities not attending mammograms. But they have this increased likelihood to die with breast cancer. And that's a similar pattern for female genital organs, um, body of the uterus, and ovarian cancer as well. And it's similar for the men with intellectual disabilities. Um, we have this lower incident cancer and then higher mortality. Um, the testicular isn't plotted, the testicular mortality isn't plotted due to small numbers. But what these graphs show is that there's, there's very big differences in the experiences of this patient population and how um, they are faced with different cancer diseases and, and potentially the healthcare received as well. So our results imply healthcare inequalities through later presentation or diagnosis, um, such as the unknown primary origin cancers, uh, poor treatment, compliance, or, or, or both. So what this really means is that we need a greater awareness um, of cancer presentations and symptoms um, and what that might look like um, to people who care for those with intellectual disabilities and we desperately need um, better accessibility and engagement in screening programs to diagnose these cancers earlier on to provide a better prognosis. And finally, clinicians need to be aware that cancers can present later in this population and provide preventative interventions on known risk factors to reduce the incidence. So that's my poster. Thank you very much for dropping in. A big thank you to the wonderful team we have. Look out for our paper, hopefully that'll be published soon enough. And a big thank you to our funders um, for supporting this work.